Yes, I do. We going on on time? Yeah. <laughs> Ustase and Schwartz or Leishman oh, Smith are definitely oh, look the stronger pairings, don't they? T to green, they look good, and putting, they look good. And maybe I go with Watson and uh, Scotty Scheffler next. I uh, have to say, Tony and Cameron Champ looking a little delicate around the greens. But then you've got the two youngsters, Hovland and Ventura, which talk about make a statement and get an exemption, get that win under your belt. Big putt there for Ventura. To 17 under and just two back. And as Nick pointed out, Ventura looking for, its, for his first PGA Tour victory. He'll have a chance tomorrow. Yeah, it takes two here in New Orleans. Third round in the books at the Zurich Classic of New Orleans. And we're set up for a big finish tomorrow. Remember, the format will be different. As Mark Leishman, yeah, he put on the mullet wig. Him and Cam Smith are just one back, but tomorrow it's alternate shot. Which team can put it together? It's going to take two tomorrow, and we'll see you on CBS. For the entire CBS golf team, I'm Andrew Catalan. Thank you for joining us here in New Orleans. Have a great night, and we'll see you for the final round tomorrow from the Big Easy. Wednesday, Colbert goes live after President Biden's speech. Will he heal our nation? Can't he help us find common ground? Has he gotten that burger smell out of Air Force One yet? 48 hours, tonight at 10, 9 central on CBS. Tonight at 6, fans are back. Thousands of people packing into Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We'll show you what's being done to keep them safe. Plus, Marta makes a comeback. Dozens of bus routes reinstated this weekend, but they come with some big changes. And a former Yellow Jacket arrives in outer space. What he'll be doing during the six-month mission that lies ahead. But first, CBS 46 is in storm mode tonight. Right now, we're tracking some thunderstorms popping up across the metro. They're bringing wind, rain, and even hail. Check out these pictures, pictures just in from our viewers in DeKalb County. These were taken in Decatur and Stone Mountain. You can see that the ice pellets are about pea-sized, and this is what it looks like in Sandy Springs. CBS 46 anchor Rick Fobom just sent us this clip. You can hear the hail bouncing off of, windshield, of the windshield there. Now here's a live look outside now. This is the view from Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Things were pretty intense there just a couple of minutes ago, even though it looks pretty calm there now. Meteorologist Fred Campagna joins me now. And Fred, it looks like this round of storms is gonna cause much more damage than the first. Well, yeah, these, uh, the first round this morning was just heavy rain that came through, one to two inches of rain falling throughout our area. But these are bringing some hail more than anything else. So far, not many reports of uh, any wind damage, but we'll be watching for that as well as the severe thunderstorm watch is in effect for most of our area until 10 o'clock this 
evening. So these storms flaring up in the last couple of hours. Let's check on the one that brought that hail to Sandy Springs and of course to DeKalb County. This was a severe thunderstorm uh, a warning, but it has now been dropped at six o'clock and this is coming on through Lawrenceville moving off to the northeast here. In fact, let's track the one that is uh, moving out of uh, northern Fulton County right now and maybe up in Flowery Branch within about 10 minutes and then up into Gainesville in about the next 25 minutes as that continues along again with the potential to produce some small hail. Our severe thunderstorm warning at this point though is from uh, is troop into Merriweather County right now. Harris County uh, also included in that severe thunderstorm warning and this is moving off to the east northeast again with the potential for some strong winds potential for 50 to 60 mile per hour winds but also delivering some hail and you can see just a lot of lightning and torrential rain with this storm as it moves to the northeast. You can see that line of hail. It came right on through the airport reported hail. Most people in DeKalb County uh, and at least in the central part of DeKalb County saw some hail, but now we're not seeing as much. In fact, when we zoom in just a little spot of it up around uh, south of Alpharetta right now, but there is hail with this storm around LaGrange on I-85. And again, this one is moving off to the northeast. So if you live in the southern metro, uh, you'll want to keep tabs on this storm as it moves off to the northeast. Those of us that busted into some warmer weather at the greatest risk for some strong to severe storms during this evening. We have these that are over the metro into the south, but we also have them some that are showing up a little bit farther off to our west, rumbling on through uh, central Alabama from Huntsville down to Birmingham, just crossing 65. These are likely to get into West Georgia in about the next hour to 90 minutes, and those also will have the potential to produce uh, some hail and some strong gusty winds. So a severe thunderstorm uh, watch is in effect until 10 o'clock this evening, and it's basically this area that's shaded in yellow here where we have a level two risk of severe weather in this setup. An isolated tornado cannot be ruled out, but that is not our primary threat. So when does the risk of storms end? It ends right around midnight late this evening and midnight. You can see the action moving out and we have a great Sunday on tap. We'll continue to track these storms and I'll tell you more about that uh, nice weather for Sunday coming up. Trayson. A lot going on. Thanks so much, Fred. As Fred just said, this is the second round of storms we're seeing today. The first round did some damage this morning. Check out the scene in ha on Hapeville Road. This is in a neighborhood just off of I-75 in southwest Atlanta. The strong winds and heavy rain causing a giant tree to topple over. Now keep tabs on the weather with our free CBS 46 streaming app. Download it in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. Happening tonight in just two hours, fans will be back inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Atlanta United's home opener will be at half capacity. CBS 46's Yasmina Austin joins us now live. And Yasmina, I hear a lot of sounds coming in there. It looks like fans are extremely excited about the match and the storms aren't keeping them away from tailgating plans, right? Well, Tracy, things did slow down a little bit because of the rain, but like you said, even with a couple of hours left until the game, if you look behind me, you can see that there are still a lot of fans here and they are excited and ready to go. Now, this match is going to look a little bit different than it did before the pandemic. Of course, with only half of the seating in the stadium occupied, this makes it so that seating pods can have distance from another one. Now the other requirements of course inside of the stadium include wearing a mask, but the fans that we spoke with out here say it's all worth it to be back. We're tailgating ready for Atlanta United. Couldn't get here early enough. It's been a long year without the tailgates, without seeing Atlanta United, without seeing our boys out there on the field. Super, super excited. And the future capacity will be determined on a match by match basis and we'll have much more from inside of the stadium and much more from fans. Once the game gets started, we'll have that all new tonight at 11. We're live in Atlanta. Yasmina Alston, CBS 46 News. Thanks so much, Yasmina. Right now in Georgia, more than 2.3 million people are fully vaccinated. That's almost a quarter of the state's population. Meanwhile, over a third of Georgia residents have at least one dose of the vaccine. As vaccines ramp up, MARTA is making a comeback. Tonight, all MARTA bus routes are back up and running after being shut down during the pandemic. CBS 46's Tori Cooper joins us now live. And Tori, MARTA is taking some steps to make sure everyone feels safe, right? 
Yeah, and Trace, and they even have air filters inside of all of their buses, and they tell us that they even have buses on standby to ensure that there's always a bus ready to go that's not overcrowded. Now, the riders we did speak with today say that they are absolutely relieved to see these routes returning. It's a sound many bus riders miss hearing. I feel that people can actually get back to work, people can actually breathe again. Geneva Dyes lives in Clayton County, and like many residents, she says her life depends on public transportation. It was an inconvenience as well, because a lot of people depend on MARTA. And when they shut out all the all the routes in Clayton County, it, Clayton County has a lot, a lot of people that use MARTA. Thousands just like her say when MARTA suspended about 70 bus routes due to COVID-19, it didn't just slow down their routine. It slowed down their route to earning a living. People either had to cut their hours, forced to sit at home, lose money, um, ask neighbors. Dyes knows that struggle all too well. She runs a daycare, and when routes were suspended, she could no longer work the way she used to. Some say they were forced to turn to taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts, and the wait times were fierce. It was a very inconvenience. I had to walk 30 minutes to my next bus stop. There will still be capacity limits on MARTA buses, and passengers cannot stand. But now that all service routes have been restored, Riders are ready for their next stop. I'm very happy, yes. Yeah, I am appreciative of yes. Now, riders are still required to mask up, but Marta tells us that they will continue to monitor the cases to ensure that everyone is safe while riding. Reporting live in Midtown, I'm Tori Cooper, CBS 46 News. Thanks so much, Tori. Atlanta is now operating in phase two of its COVID-19 response plan. Next month, non-essential employees with the city of Atlanta will be able to return to government buildings. City officials say those buildings could be open to the public by mid-July. City Council President Felicia Moore announcing earlier this week that the administration is making plans to enter phase four and five soon. Now, President Joe Biden plans to visit Atlanta next week, celebrating his first 100 days in office. He and the first lady will participate in a drive-in rally Thursday. The president is also expected to highlight his $2 trillion infrastructure proposal. Now to a crime alert in Villa Rica. Tonight, a man shot and killed outside a bar. It happened in the parking lot of the Watering Hole Bar on Highway 78. Investigators arrested 25-year-old Brandon Shirley, you see him there, who turned himself in. They say Shirley had been arguing with the victim, then shot him in the chest. He's facing several charges, including felony murder and is currently sitting behind bars in Carroll County. And Gilmer County authorities are looking for four murder suspects. You see them on your screen. The people you see there have warrants issued for their arrest. Investigators say they're wanted in connection to the murder of 37-year-old Rosanna Delgado. Delgado was found dead on April 20th in Cherry Log uh, after being reported missing back on April 16th. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. Today, Matthew Zadok Williams was laid to rest. The 35-year-old was killed in an officer-involved shooting in DeKalb County back on April 12th. The GBI says officers were called to the Terrace Apartments in Decatur after a report of a man with a knife. Body camera shows Williams lunging at an officer with a knife. He later barricades himself in his apartment, and after a verbal exchange with officers, officers opened fire, shooting Williams. He bled out at the scene. We want justice, of course, for our brother. Um, and we want answers, number one, is we want the full uh, police footage to be released with the audio. So that, because we have a right, you have a right as a citizen of DeKalb County and a citizen of Georgia to hear the whole narrative and not just with their um, depiction of what my brother's last moments were. The family claims Williams would be alive today had officers rendered aid immediately after firing the shots instead of waiting for SWAT to arrive. They say Williams was suffering a mental episode and the time of at the time of his death. This just caught us completely off guard. A gender reveal disaster still ahead. The explosive 
explosive celebration that rocked homes for miles. Plus, a former Yellow Jacket now floating around in space. Our first look at his mission aboard the International Space Station. And heads up, if you live in Coweta County, southern half of Coweta County, particularly southeast Coweta County, as well as uh, Clayton County, uh, Fayette County, you are going to get uh, hit by this storm. A severe thunderstorm warning is in effect. This one's moving to the northeast, capable of producing 60 plus mile per hour winds and large hail, which we've already seen quite a bit of so far this afternoon in North Georgia. I'll track this and all the other action for you coming up. Thanks for making CBS 46 the fastest growing news in Atlanta. Incredible video out of Texas. At least two tornadoes touched down near the Texas Oklahoma border last night. Storm chasers captured this amazing video of one of the twisters. Incredibly and luckily, no serious property damage or injuries were reported. Now back here at home, storms are scattered across the state and in Coweta County, the heavy wind and rain is hampering cleanup efforts from last month's deadly tornado. CBS 46's Barmel Lyons spoke with people who are still trying to pick up the pieces. The sun is finally starting to shine after heavy rains hit a community recuperating from the E4 tornado. I think the weather today is really going to back up things, especially on the roof repair. Heavy rains and gusty winds sweep through Coweta County. There's so many roofs here that uh, need repair, yeah. uh, slippery conditions, kind of dangerous today. Hopefully it'll dry up for all the work that needs to be done down here in the community. Some locals seeing this pause in production as a benefit rather than a loss. The guys are probably happy to get a day off finally. Ain't been working so hard and real good at it, so. Contractors and neighbors working one by one to pick up the trail of destruction left behind from the E4 tornado. There was even one house that it was hit so badly that the back uh, perimeter wall was actually blown out of the house. Environmental scientist Sean Watson has been working day in and day out with his team to repair Noonan Home. It's Saturday. We're out here working, trying to make sure we can at least get that 
that hazard out of their way so that they can actually get back to the, the reconstruction of their lives. Rain, although an obstacle, will not put a stop to the work. You know, we've made it this far. And again, as Gary said, the community is so strong. This, this is not going to be any problem. And check this sign out from the West family, the owners of this home. They say they will forever be grateful to you for their help. They're talking about the workers, those who pass by, and the community who has been really sticking together, saying they will forever be hashtag Noonan Strong. In Noonan, I'm Barma Lyons, CBS 46 News.